tonight. Uh, COVID-19 community's case search begins in Lagos as state health authorities announce capacity to conduct about a thousand tests per day. Just as 83-year-old coronavirus patient is confirmed dead. Edo State Government declares dusk to dawn curfew for 10 days as part of measures to contain spread of the COVID-19 in the state. After so much controversy and Pangasin's threats to down tools, River State Government releases detained ExxonMobil workers. The union has now called off the planned strike. And New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says the COVID-19 outbreak is only slowing and not growing as it calls for caution following slight decrease in death toll in the last 24 hours. Plus sports stories tonight. The fierce battle to tame the dreaded COVID-19 continues from all fronts as the Lagos State Government says it now has the capacity to conduct about a thousand COVID-19 tests per day. Another major move by the health authorities in Lagos is that they will now go all out in search of all active cases within the community. The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aking Abayomi, explains that the state is recording more cases as a result of its ongoing search. Professor Abayomi was speaking at a press briefing in Lagos today. As of the last three or four days, we've been seeing a consistent double digit in terms of new cases, and those numbers seem to be increasing. The day before yesterday, we saw 32 new cases, and yesterday we saw 23. When we combine those graphs, we can see the red line is our current projection. We had gone down to the blue line, but now we seem to be moving at a steeper gradient, which suggests that there, we are beginning to see more cases of infection in the community. This is just an overall schema of what's happening from our index case up until we started to import quite a few cases through the airport and where we started our strategies of contact tracing, isolation, social distancing, lockdown, which started around the end of March. And our latest strategy is active community case searching. So we're no longer just waiting for people to present. We're actually going into the community through all the local governments, door to door. The red line demonstrates what would have happened if we had not deployed any of the strategies. By now, we would have been seeing about 6,000 cases. But as a result of our strategies, and that reflects the blue line, you can see, despite the fact that we seem to be seeing more cases on a daily, daily basis, we are really in a position where our strategies in Lagos State have indeed dramatically reduced the number of cases that we would have seen had we not deployed these strategies. So the blue line at the bottom there is indeed a flat curve. We're clearly not out of the woods yet, as an 83-year-old woman is the latest COVID-19 fatality in Lagos State. The Commissioner for Health in a Twitter message said the woman died from complications from COVID-19, as she also had underlying health issues. This brings the total number of COVID-19-related deaths in Lagos to 14, and total number of confirmed cases to 309 94 patients have so far been discharged from the state isolation centers. In Edo State, a dusk to dawn curfew will begin from tomorrow, Monday, April 20th. But Governor Godwin Obaseki says the decision is subject to review after 10 days when more tests would have been conducted. He explains that the curfew is part of additional measures to ensure that people stay home to mitigate the spread of the virus. 
he said this at a press conference in Benin, the state capital. Model predicted that after the first the Edo State COVID-19 response team is set for a briefing at the government house in Benin City, the state capital. The venue is scantily populated, with less than 20 persons inside and well spaced in line with the social distancing directives issued by the state government. The good news is that. With the, steps the chairman of the state's COVID-19 task force, Governor Godwin Obaseki, gets down to the day's business. He recaps the efforts made so far to curb the spread of the coronavirus in the state since its index case was announced on March the 23rd. Our approach is to use data and evidence to take the steps and actions which are required to flatten that curve so that we can reduce the incidence. COVID-19 is not and should not be a death sentence. The state government says a total shutdown of the economy may expose the people to hardship. The governor announces a dusk-to-dawn curfew instead. With effect from tomorrow, 20th of April, an order prohibiting the movement of people in Edo State from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. will be in force. The governor also reassures the people of plans to sustain the palliative measures already in place. The index case in Edo State, the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Frank Okie, is among those recently discharged. He shares his experience surviving the virus. I was fighting initially, but after a while, with the continuous interaction with the people, I started getting a fight, teaming up with the local help, and then a few medication that I was placed on to deal with the symptoms. So, and two days later, I started getting better. I started feeling, I started being conscious that I was going to survive it, and uh, today I'm here. The Edo state government insists that it will continue to review the decisions taken so far based on the evidence obtained from mass screening and testing for the coronavirus across the state. And the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in nearby Ogun state has risen to 12 after two new cases were confirmed by health authorities. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tommy Koka, says the two new cases had contact with an earlier case who had international travel history. She explains that the patients are, patients are currently under close monitoring in one of the isolation centers in the state, while their contacts are also being monitored. The commissioner also explains that the state has investigated 210 contacts across six local government areas, with 110 of them isolated and discharged after testing negative, while about 1,000 a like pardon, 100 others are currently under observation. And a fresh case of the coronavirus has been confirmed in Bochi State after two weeks without any new case. The latest patient is a staff of the World Health Organization from Bochi and has a travel history to Kano State. The State Commissioner for Health, Aliu Megoro, says the building housing World Health Organization and UNICEF offices has been decontaminated and sealed for two weeks. And all persons who came in contact with a new patient, both in Kano and in Bochi, are being traced. Meanwhile, five coronavirus patients have been discharged in Bochi State after testing negative twice. So far, there are only two active cases in the state. The Jigawa state government has also announced a lockdown in Kazare local government area council as it records a confirmed case of COVID-19 in the state today. This brings the total number of cases being managed in the state to two after Kano state government handed over a Jigawa in the June to his home state. Governor Badaru Abubakar says the lockdown will be effective from Monday midnight. He asks that all essential service providers are exempted and grains will be distributed to affected local government areas. In order to curb the spread of the infection in the state, Kazero local government will be locked down for a period of seven days from 12 midnight tomorrow, April 20th. 
2022. Security agent will work with the civil society organizations, vigilantes and HISPA to, to enforce the lockdown and all are directed to stay at home pending the, the time all contacts are traced, sample taken, a result known for the specific individuals. Uh, as per for food, food stock, we have ordered. Now we'll direct them to quickly start delivering that of uh, Kazori so that we'll start with that local government because now it's being blocked. It is good news from a number of states. As Governor Willie Obiano today announced, the state's COVID-19 index case has now tested negative after treatment. He says 39 people who had direct contact with the patients have been traced by the state's medical team and are being monitored. Governor Obiano also received the Director General of the National Center for Disease Control, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu, who led the NCDC team to monitor preventive activities against COVID-19 in an Anambra state. I'm delighted to announce that the report reaching me from the Protective Care Center indicates that our index case is responding very well to treatment. And in fact, the first post-treatment result from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control uh, returned negative of, of, for SARS-CoV-2. In other words, the test we just made on our index case uh, reported negative. However, following the standards which have been rigorously applied by NCDC since the outbreak of the pandemic in Nigeria, he will go for a second round of tests before he can be conclusively declared negative. We shall continue to remember him in our prayers as he fights his way back from his illness. We know we are going to get over this, but we know we can't get over it without the support of everyone concerned. So really, there's no greater time to ask for everyone to join the work being led on in Anabra by His Excellency the Governor, an amazing public health team that I spent the last two hours with. We had an opportunity to go through the activities that we're carrying out around the state, uh, the engagement in managing the one case we've had so far in Anabra, but critically, to ensure that we prevent other cases as much as we can within our gift. The Ebony State Government has imposed a dusk to dawn curfew to curtail any chance of the coronavirus spreading in the state. A lockdown of communities and villages is to commence at 7 p.m. from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. with all borders, entry and exit points of the state closed. The state governor, Dave Umahi, disclosed this at an emergency security council meeting where he suspended party activities, embargoed the position of corpses at hospitals without verified cause of death, and announced the commencement of a house-to-house -house test for the coronavirus, which will last about two weeks. Because of leakages and the borders, we have agreed that we are going to do partial lockdown at the border areas, you know, from you know, the entire state. We are working down the entire state from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So there will be no movement in the Bonnie State, including those bringing building materials or uh, whatever. Only health workers are permitted to move under the instruction of the health team only within the, uh, uh, the isolation centers. So we have to note that we have locked down the entire state from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., which means that no night activities and no night movement in every part of the Polish state, because these leakages happen mostly at night, and this is the best we can do. 